The Assembly will hear an address by His Excellency Abdel Fattah al-Burhan Abdel Rahman al-Burhan, President of the Transitional Sovereign Council of the Republic of Sudan. I request protocol to escort His Excellency. On behalf of the General Assembly, I have the honor to welcome His Excellency Abdel Fattah al-Burhan Abdel Rahman al-Burhan, President of the Transitional Sovereign Council of the Republic of the Sudan, and to invite him to address the Assembly. In the name of God, the compassionate, the merciful, Mr. President, honorable heads of state and governments, ladies and gentlemen, Peace and blessings of God be upon you. In the name of the government and people of Sudan, I would like to congratulate you, Mr. President, on assuming the presidency of this session. I would also like to thank your predecessor and His Excellency, the Secretary General, for their efforts to counter the challenges that faced our world over the past year. Mr. President, since the 15th of April, the Sudanese people have been facing a destructive war launched by the rebel rapid support forces. They established alliances with tribal militias and other regional and international ones. They brought mercenaries from different corners of the globe committing some of the most horrendous crimes against the Sudanese people. These groups have killed, looted, stealed, raped, and seized citizens' homes and properties. They have destroyed civil objects, be it public facilities, hospitals, state buildings, or government buildings. They attempted to obliterate the history of the Sudanese people by attacking museums, antiquities, by destroying land records, civil registries, and court registries. They've also looted banks, private and public corporations, and released prisoners and detainees, including those who have been wanted by international justice, including terrorists. These rebel groups have committed crimes against humanity and war crimes in many corners of Sudan. They have carried out ethnic cleansing and forced displacement as well as sexual violence and killing based on ethnicity. They are guilty of torture and many acts that amount to war crimes in Darfur, Khartoum, and other places. What was witnessed in West Darfur in Al Janaina was a shock to international conscience. So was what happened in Tawila, Morni, Menwashe, and even in Khartoum. It was a testimony of the acts of these rebel groups and their allies. We call upon you, Mr. President, and we call upon the international community to designate these groups and their allies as terrorist groups that must be countered by all. They must be fought to protect the Sudanese people, the region, and the entire world. They are responsible for the killing of thousands and the displacement of millions. Mr. President, Excellencies, despite what has been committed by these groups and since their attack against the state, we've knocked all doors to, st to stop this war. We responded to each and every uh, initiative by our friends and brothers. We attended the JEDA meeting uh, based on a friendly um, invitation by the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia and the USA. 
We made good progress if it was not for the intransigence of the rebels who have refused to exit inhabited neighborhoods. We've also accepted the IGAD initiative and the initiative of the neighboring countries held in Egypt. Till this very day, we're extending a hand of peace to put an end to this war and to alleviate the suffering of our people. We have also accepted the initiative of our brothers in Turkey and South Sudan, as well as Uganda, to find solutions. However, they were all faced with the rebels' refusal to find a peaceful solution and their insistence to destroy the state, to commit genocide and forced displacement. Mr. President, some characterize this war as an internal feud between two armed parties. However, the aggression was not only against the armed forces, instead it extended to all state components. The innocent citizens are not part of the armed forces. The people in West Darfur are not part of the armed forces. The homes of our citizens are not part of the armed forces. Therefore, this war cannot be characterized as a war between the armed forces and the rapid uh, support forces. It actually extends to all state components. However, I would like to assure you that the danger of this war is now a threat to regional and international peace and security. For those rebels have sought the support of outlaws and terrorist groups from different countries in the region and the world. This is like the spark of war, a war that will spill over to other countries in the region. Regional and international interference to support these groups is crystal clear by now. This means that this is the first sparkle that will burn the region and will have a direct impact on regional and international peace and security. Mr. President, honorable attendees, allow me to express my thanks for the valuable effort of the United Nations and the Secretary General to support the humanitarian situation in Sudan. We also appreciate all effort made by the different UN agencies and other regional and international agencies, along with the efforts of the sister countries who have provided humanitarian assistance to, to Sudan. They've stood by our side to alleviate the repercussions of this criminal war. On its part, the government of Sudan has opened ports and airports and facilitated the movement and transit um, of convoys. It attempted to alleviate and remove all obstacles facing humanitarian action. We have coordinated all efforts so that assistance can reach all those in need and all those affected. In this vein, we call upon all agencies and countries to meet their pledges to fill this huge gap in uh, food, medicine, and shelter that has affected huge segments of our people. Those who have been affected by this war launched by the rebels of the RSF under the command of Dangolo. Mr. President, Excellencies, we are still committed to our previous pledges to transfer power to the people of Sudan with great national consensus and consent. Thus, the armed forces would leave politics for uh, once and for all. Transfer of power would then be the result of a peaceful and legitimate process of elections. Uh, we perceive a short transitional period when the country would be governed by a civil government consisting of independence. During this period, they can address security, humanitarian and economic matters and reconstruction. Then general elections would be held so that the Sudanese people can choose their leaders. We stress that the state is committed to continue dialogue with all those who have abstained, our brothers Abdel Aziz El Helu and Abdel Aziz Mohammed Noor, so that they can join the march towards national statehood. We are fully committed to the peace agreement signed in Juba back in 2020. We have made great strides to bring about peace and address so many obstacles facing Sudanese statehood. Excellencies, I would like to reiterate Sudan's commitment to support women 
and children and the vulnerable segments of our society so that they can enjoy all their rights and protect them in light of the ongoing disputes. We renew our commitment to achieve the SDGs in this vein, halting or freezing international assistance and humanitarian assistance over the past period had its repercussions on implementing such goals. It had its direct impact on expanding the gap in social protection and countering climate change, as well as the food crisis. It has exacerbated the situation of the refugees and displaced. Thus, we appeal to the donors and relief agencies to continue supporting and addressing humanitarian situation in Sudan by providing assistance to those in need, especially the refugees and the displaced. Before concluding, I would like to reiterate our demand to designate the, rap uh, the rapid support forces and their allied militias as terrorist groups, for they have committed all sorts of crimes that give grounds for such designation. There is a need to firmly address their uh, sponsors, uh, those who have supported the killing, burning, raping, the forced displacement, the looting, stealing, torture, transfer of arms and drugs, bringing mercenaries or recruiting children, all such crimes that necessitate accountability and punishment. I would also like to reiterate that the legitimate state institutions, be it government or armed forces and other bodies, will never allow any violation of our state sovereignty or humiliate, humiliating uh, our people at any cost. It would be a remiss not to recall and address our regional organizations of the need to free themselves from guardianship and seek the interests of the African people so that they can regain the trust of the Africans. We will not uh, allow some to find solutions to our problems according to their own interests. To conclude, Mr. President, I would like to thank you once again and thank his Excellency, the Secretary General, for understanding our internal and dom domestic issues and for standing by the people of Sudan. I would also like to uh, thank our neighbors and our uh, brothers and sisters and friends who have stood um, beside us. We'd also like to thank the regional organizations. We thank you all for your support to surmount this crisis and this barbaric attack launched by the ter criminals of the RSF. I would like to seize this opportunity to express our solidarity with our brothers in Morocco and Libya following the disasters they have been facing. I would also like to thank all the people of Sudan who have stood by us, supported us, and bore with us over the past few months all these sufferings to get rid of these rebel terrorist groups. Thank you for your attention, and peace and blessings of God be upon you. On behalf of the Assembly, I wish to thank the President of the Transitional Sovereign Council of the Republic of Sudan for the statement just made, and I request protocol to escort His Excellency.